Hey guys, welcome back to the Better Beach YouTube channel. My name's Brandon. If you have not already done so, please, please, please go ahead and subscribe before we get into the content of this video. Um, also, go ahead and like this video and share it with all your friends if you want your friends to get better at serving along with you. Today's video is focusing on some fixes that you can make in your off season that are going to help you score more points on your serve. If you're looking for some help with your ball control and your passing or your setting, make sure you check out our videos from last week and the week before where we were talking about some off season fixes for your passing and your setting. If you're looking to dive in a little bit more into your serving, make sure you head over to betteratbeach.com where we have a complete serving course that will not only give you some of the tips that we're going to be focusing on today, but also give you all the tools, all the ideas necessary to perform every type of serve that you would want to have in your arsenal. The three things that we're focusing on today are the posture that you need pre, during, and post during your serve, your hand contact, and finally, the footwork you would need to perform a more aggressive serve. If you are a person that is completely okay with just doing a standing float serve, then the first two points are going to be very important for you. If you're looking to up your overall serving game and power, then make sure you do all three. The first thing that we're covering today is posture. When we think about serving, some of us, our only goal that we have is to get the ball over to the other side of the net. And for some of us, that's a great goal to have. But some of the reasons that accomplishing this goal is a little difficult is because we don't know how to posture our bodies to help us succeed when we're thinking about serving. Most of the time when we're working with clients in person and we see them having trouble serving, a lot of it has to do with the shape of their body before the serve, during the serve, and after the serve. Before you get ready to serve, it's important for you to set your body up for success. And what that means is if you're standing float serving, then you should go ahead and set up that strong base with your non-hitting arms foot in front, okay? And your feet should feel very, very balanced underneath you. If you're able to do that, then the rest of your body from your torso up to your shoulders should feel very strong as well. A lot of the times we see servers that just get ready to go and they're just hanging out back here and then they toss their serve and they try to go real fast. That just allows for a lot of inconsistencies with your contact and your serving location. If you've had issues with your control before, what I want you to focus on, set up your foundation so that you feel strong. The next thing you need to focus on is during the process of your serve. So when you're making contact, what does your body look like? Some of us don't even know what our body looks like during the contact. If you are missing in the net or you're missing side to side, then more than likely you are either shrinking here or you're doing a lot of leaning from side to side. Once again, when we start leaning or we start shrinking forward, we're losing a lot of strength. So what I'm gonna challenge you to do is while you're serving, concentrate on pushing your chest up towards the ball, allowing you to stay as tall as possible. This should allow you to have an appropriate arm swing. If you're able to stay tall during your arm swing, then there's two other things that you can focus on. The first is allowing yourself to have a full drawback. And the full drawback happens by pinching your shoulder blades. If I toss this ball and I'm able to stay tall throughout my toss, then it will allow me to pinch my shoulder blades, allowing for more of a drawback of my attacking arm. Another thing that you can focus on is after you toss this ball, try to wave to somebody standing behind you before coming forward and making your contact. If you're able to accomplish that, then the last thing that you have to think about is what your posture should feel like after your contact. And one thing that we wanna to continue to focus on is staying tall. We wanna be as big as possible throughout the process of this serve. So after your serve happens, you've gotten this drawback, you've made your contact through contact, try to stay as tall as possible while you're moving onto the court. 
The drill that I want you to do, we like to call around the world serving. If you're a beginner, you're going to set up four locations on the other side of the net that you're going to try to hit. If you're an intermediate or an advanced player, then you can make those positions into six boxes or even eight boxes if you want to work on your accuracy. The whole goal of you doing this is whatever serve that you're doing, you're focusing on the posture of your body during your serving routine. Our second key that we have for today is our hand contact. And this is pretty simple, but a lot of us have trouble with where we contact the ball. And instead of contacting the ball in the meat of the ball, we see people contacting on the right side, on top, underneath, or on the other side. And one way that you can tell if you're doing this, especially if you're float serving, is whatever kind of spin the ball has, more than likely your contact made that spin happen, unless you have a really aggressive toss. So if you notice that the spin has a lot of top spin, more than likely you're getting two on top of the ball. If it spins to the left, you're contacting on the left, and if it spins to the right, you're contacting on the right. If you're a server, which we see this a lot with beginners, that get a lot of backspin on their serve, then more than likely you are tossing and you are hitting the ball underneath, creating a lot of backspin. Either way, when we're thinking about serving, we want to be the reason that we are contacting the ball and making it spin or making it not spin. Whenever you're doing a float serve, you want to try to eliminate all spin from the ball. And the reason for this is because spin tends to cut through wind. If the ball is just up there hanging, then that's when the wind will help that ball float even more. But once again, if you add spin to this ball, then you're not allowing the float to happen that you really want and which makes the serve so dangerous. The way that you make a float serve not have spin on it has a lot to do with how you contact the ball. Somebody told me once, and it's helped me out a lot, is that whenever I'm going for the contact of my serve, I need to think about making contact, but instead of making contact on this side of the ball, I need to try to hit this side of the ball. I know that sounds a little weird, but we've all been in a position where the ball kind of shrinks because of compression. And what I'm trying to do with my serve is I'm trying to contact this ball and have little movement afterwards, but instead of trying to touch this side, I'm gonna try to make the ball deflate and touch this side of the ball. But that has to do with my finish and then a, an abrupt stop. That abrupt stop showing off the finish of your hand to the position that you want to finish the ball is what's going to allow this ball to float instead of spin. The drill you're going to do to work on hand contact is ball to a wall. If you are looking for a float serve, then you're going to find a wall and you are just going to hit your float serve practicing trying to avoid any type of spin and you're just going to hit the ball at the wall without it hitting the ground first and it's going to bounce back to you. If you are trying to work on a jump serve where you're trying to find top spin, then I want you to try to do the same drill but you're going to try to go continuous and the ball should make contact with your hand, hit the ground and then hit the wall and bounce back to you and you're going to try to do this continuously. You're going to have to concentrate on a lot of good foot movement and watching for a strong contact for your hand. The third key for today is learning the footwork to provide yourself with a more aggressive serving style. The footwork that I'm going to show you right now has to do with whether you're trying to do a jump float serve or a top spin serve. With our standing float serve, obviously we're not moving a lot. We have our strong base and we have our hand out in front, our arm drawn back, we have our toss, and then we have our finish. A standing float serve can be very effective and it can be a way that you can win points, but once you start leveling up in your game, you're going to have to find ways to increase the speed and a different trajectory of the ball to make the job more difficult for the passers to pass. A lot of the times when we are teaching people how to jump float serve or top spin serve, they try to reinvent the wheel and they do something funky with their feet. We've all learned a four step approach. So for me, I'm right handed, which means my approach for hitting would be my right foot, my left foot, and then a right quick right left to jump up and hit. We're gonna use the same footwork that we would use for our attack as we would with our serve. The only difference is that we have to add in a toss 
For a jump spin serve, you just toss the same time that you're setting down your timing step of what would be in your approach. And then it's just gonna be like you're hitting a set that you tossed yourself. With the jump float serve, we're going to put our toss in the middle of our approach. So we're going to go first step, second step, toss, and then our last two steps to get to the ball and hit. A common mistake that we see all the time is that people, whenever they're serving, they tend to toss the ball too low. Especially if you're working on a jump float serve or a jump top spin serve, try to allow yourself more time by tossing the ball higher, which is going to allow you to be more aggressive with your last two steps to set yourself up for a successful contact. Your contact should always be right over top of your hitting arm, right in front of your body. So if you feel like you're reaching from side to side, then you either didn't give yourself a good toss or your feet weren't very good. So make sure when you're doing this, you're practicing a good toss and then you're getting your feet so that your contact is happening directly over your hitting shoulder. The drill I want you to do to work on this is called progressive serving. You're going to start in the court and you're gonna do this a couple different times because we wanna practice our jump float and we wanna practice our jump top spin serve. When you're starting about three quarters of the way back on the court, you're going to practice the footwork that I've just explained and then you're going to be hitting the ball over the net. The reason that I'm having you start in the court and I'm ha not having you start at the end line is because I want you to see how much these serves resemble an attack. And if we're starting in the court, then you're going to feel like you're attacking. But eventually, you should be moving back, maybe after each five reps, move back about two steps until you eventually get to the end line. But try to keep the same form and the same focus that you did while you were in the court. The only difference is you're probably gonna have to hit the ball a little bit quicker and harder in order to get it over to the net. Make sure you tune in next week where we're going to be diving a little deeper into what you can work on in your off season for attacking. If you're looking to dive a little bit deeper into your serving, make sure you go over to betteratbeach.com and check out our complete serving course. And also make sure you record yourself doing these drills and head over to Volley Chat, our Facebook group, so that you can not only post and get recommendations from everyone in that group, but also from myself and Mark. We'll see you next time.